My wife and I were sitting on the back porch one day and she commented how nice it would be to have a TV out there. Of course, I said, you don't want a TV out here. You know, we get some pretty good storms here in North Carolina. Of course, the pollen, you'd be cleaning it all the time. And all she did was give me that, surely you can do something look. So this is my something. I'm gonna build us an enclosure for the TV. I'm gonna build it out of aluminum and I'm using 3003 aluminum and it's 063 thick. As you can see, I kind of got my layout here. Uh, I need to notch some corners out uh, so that when I bend these sides up to form this into a box that they will meet nice and tight in the middle and I've got a one inch 90 degree bend that goes all the way around it as well. When I bend that, that will complete a lip on the front side of it, which will allow me to put a door on it to close it all complete. Okay, this one inch lip has 45 degree cuts in it so that when that's folded in, it will meet nice and tight on the top. So it'll be much easier to weld with. I'll be using the Multimatic 220 ACDC for this project and I'll be using 4043 filler metal. This material cuts pretty easy. I'm just going to be using an old, uh, an old old jigsaw on it. I normally would take this over to my bandsaw but I snapped a blade in it the other day. But it cuts pretty easy. You could even use a hand snips for it. But keep in mind if you use hand snips on this stuff it does tend to warp the material a little bit so you'll have to kind of straighten that out. But uh, a little jigsaw or even a sawzall will do the job. Don't forget to debur your rough edges. And rinse and repeat three more times. Perfect. Now it's over to bead roller so we can emboss this into the piece. I like to start these bead rolls on the flat instead of on the radius. Just easier to get everything lined up. Also, it's about impossible to do this one with only one person without having an electric feed on your bead roller. This was an old hand crank model and about the best thing I ever did was convert it over to electric. Another thing you can do to help prevent some of the warping and tension that happens in your sheet is make your radiuses as wide as you can. This one happens to be a three inch radius. All I did was take a compass and draw it out on some construction paper and cut it out. I'm not making a extremely deep offset here. just because I want to reduce the chances of having too much tension put in the sheet. Just like that. All right, we're gonna bend the one inch lips first. So we had a little bit of a snafu. Uh, my box pan brake only has a clearance of three and a half inches, which I knew. And I made these sides three and a half inches. However, 
I didn't calculate the bend radius for two bends, which actually added about an eighth inch to the outside dimension, which makes it three and five eighths. So I couldn't make my two end bends. It got uh, stuck in the pan break. So I've had to kind of come up with this other method of clamping some large angle iron in place and another piece of angle iron on the back here. And I'll get my son out here for an extra set of hands so we can bend this thing up. darn close. With everything squared up and clamped to my weld table, I can start tacking in my corners. I'm going to tack my outsides and the tops, and then I'm going to come back around and finish welding them complete. Remember, before you start welding, clean all your weld joints with a dedicated stainless steel brush, and wipe them clean with some acetone. Okay. I'm going to be using the Multimatic 220 ACDC for this project. I have my main amperage set about 95, which is a little bit more than what you typically would use for this 63 thick material. I like putting down a quicker, hotter tack. My balance control is set down to 73, which gives me a little bit more cleaning, and that's helpful because of the outside corners, where the base metal is actually falling away from the welding arc. And my frequency is set for 85. That 85 number widens the weld puddle out a little bit. Warning, read and follow all labels and your owner's manuals. And remember, I'm using 4043 1 16th filler metal for this. I'm gonna weld the easy sides first and then flip it around. Now that I got everything tacked tight, I'm gonna take these machinist blocks and put them under each corner. And that'll raise this up a little bit so that I can start my weld on the bottom and work my way up. All right, flip it around and repeat. It's about time to make the front panel for this thing. And this is actually what I got in mind. I made this little mock-up panel. And what I did is I took my step dies and I formed a flange around the outside edge. Then I flipped the piece over and I flanged the bottom. So basically the bottom is inverted from the sides and it's offset. What that's gonna allow me to do is take my panel Instead of having a hinge, I'm gonna take that panel and it'll lock in behind this lower lip and it'll overlap on the other three. So it'll give it a really nice smooth finish. Except I've got to metal finish the weld smooth first. So that's what we're gonna do next. And then make a bigger panel. All right, time to make this measurement for my front panel. It's 42 inches wide, 26 inches tall, but actually there's a, there's a little step in the flange, so that takes up about an eighth inch, so I really need to subtract an eighth inch off each side, which is a quarter inch. So that means I've got 42 and three quarters, and Nope, check that. 41 and three quarters. By 25 and three quarters. Pays to measure twice, cut once. All right, it's about perfect. Now I need to notch these corners inch by inch, and I'm gonna radius these a little bit here too. I'm just gonna take my little air angle grinder and knock the corners off of that. And then take this to my bandsaw and knock off inch by inch notch on this corner. 
This is where that inverted lip is going to fit underneath. All right, I got my panel cut and my corners notched out for that bottom lip. Also, I got my lines drawn on for my bead roller. When working with a piece this large, it's best to have two people to help feed it through the bead roller or what I'm gonna do is actually bring my weld table closer to the bead roller and then suspend it up with a, a box or something to get it to the same height. And that's gonna help me feed it through the bead roller without having the chance of this kinking or bending. All right, let's check how this fits, shall we? Let's see. Right, slides in the front. Just like that. Now I'll get a couple little cabinet latches or even maybe some key locks and that'll hold that door shut. So now it's time to figure out how I want to mount my TV into this thing. The easy button would be to just drill some holes and mount the TV into it permanently. But then it's going to be kind of clumsy to try and hang this thing on the wall. And like I said, it's going to be permanently in there. So what I decided to do was take a couple of two inch strips, run it through my bead roller again with those step dies to make this little offset mount. Okay, one of them is going to be welded inside the cabinet and the other one is going to get bolted to the back side of the TV with these bolts that I cut the heads down on. Okay. Then I can just take the TV, slide it in the cabinet and drop it into its mount. Alright, I got everything in position, got some machinist blocks to hold it down. I did turn up my frequency a little bit to 90 on the Multimatic 220 ACDC. It still gives me a little bit of a wider bead, but a little bit more control. All right, I think that'll do. Got my other one mounted on the back of the TV. If this doesn't work, I'm gonna look pretty stupid. All right, one TV mounted in the enclosure. Now all I gotta do is really just punch a couple holes in the enclosure, mount it to the wall, and another hole for the power cord. Perfect. Now all she has to do is decide if she wants to paint it. 